In this video, we will create a stock chatbot that uses OpenAI's ChatGPT function calling. The chatbot's primary function is to provide users with the latest stock price along with its historical data and chart. To save time and cost, only the latest price is obtained by ChatGPT and the historical data and the chart are generated without using any tokens. The chart displays the ticker symbol, which ChatGPT used for the function calling as watermark, in this case MSTF. So let's start implementing the chatbot by creating an empty folder called stock chatbot. Change to the new folder and start Visual Studio Code from inside the directory. In Visual Studio Code, we create a virtual environment with python-m vnv vnv. After the virtual environment is created, we must activate it. The name of the virtual environment appears before our prompt, in this case vnv. Now we are ready to install our packages. We'll create a requirement.txt file, list all of the required packages, and save it. Now we go to our terminal and type pip install-r requirements.txt. This installs the packages and all of the dependencies. Depending on the speed of your machine, this will take some while. After all of the packages are installed, the prompt comes back and we can clear the terminal. The next step is to create a .env file and add our OpenAI key and assign it to OpenAI underscore API underscore key. Next, close it. Before we proceed with the main chatbot implementation, we will use a Jupyter Notebook to visualize our chart and test our libraries. Before running the cells in our notebook, we must select a kernel. Here you can use our virtual environment. After selecting the kernel, we import some libraries. And from lightweight charts, we import Jupyter chart. In the next cell, we use the AAPL symbol and get the historical data of Apple from Yahoo Finance. As you can see, the date is used as index, but we need it as an individual column. So we make some adjustments to the data frame and reset the index and change the column names to lowercase. Next, we visualize data using PyGWalker library. In the data tab, we see the date is now an individual column and the column names are lowercase. In the visualization tab, we can create a linear chart from date and close price. If you need another chart, we can add a new tab, and this time we create a chart based on date and trading volume. We can change it to bar time. To combine these two charts in a professional candlestick chart, we use Jupyter chart. We set the data frame and set the symbol as watermark. As you can see, we get a candlestick chart for the Apple stock and the Apple AAPL as watermark. Once we have a clear understanding of the data visualization aspect, we will proceed to the next part and create an app.py file to implement our chatbot. The first step is to import packages. Next, we handle the openai.api key and assign our key to it. The next step is to create a function called getStockPrice to take a ticker and return the latest closing price of a stock using Yahoo Finance. We can test our function by calling it with the ticker AAPL and sure enough, it returns the latest closing price of Apple which is $191. So our function works and we can remove this line. 
Now we need a user interface. We navigate to streamlit.io. In the Streamlit's documentation, there is a tutorial on building a simple chatbot graphical user interface. Scroll down to find the view full code link and expand and copy all of the sample code. Back to Visual Studio Code, paste the sample code after our function. We change the title to AI Stock Data Chatbot. We scroll down to Chat Messages Assistant and add a placeholder. The chatbot gives back some random choices. We delete them and add our placeholder. Now it's time to implement the function calling part. We navigate to OpenAI GPT in the function calling area and scroll down and copy the sample code. Back in Visual Studio Code, we scroll up right before the streamlit title and paste the sample code. We don't run the conversation from here, so we remove this line and place it in the place of our placeholder and use the user prompt as argument. So we use the prompt in our function and replace the hard-coded sample prompt with our variable. This serves as the content for the user message. Next, we have to update the function name to the name of our Python function and give it a description like give the latest closed price of a ticker symbol of a company so that ChatGPT knows when to use this function. This function has a parameter ticker with the description the ticker symbol for the stock of a company for example MSTF for Microsoft. We remove the other parameter and make ticker required. So now we have one function description in our functions list. We inform ChatGPT about this function by passing the functions list when we set up the chat completion along with the model GPT-3.5 Turbo-0613. To see if the chat GPT decided to use the function or not, we add a comment line. Now we adjust the function call by providing the right function name. But before we call the function with the ticker argument, we store it in a variable called info underscore ticker to return it later. Next, we adjust the argument and add a comment line to check the function response and add it to the variable called info underscore latest underscore price to return it later too. Next, we send the function response once again back to ChatGPT with the role function to turn it to a user-friendly chant message. We add another comment line to check that the second response too. Finally, we put the three pieces of information together and use json.dumps before we return it to the streamlit part and return the info chat response along with the info latest price and info ticket. In case ChatGPT does not use our function call, we need to send back the content of the first ChatGPT response. So we add an else part and create the same result structure, but this time ticker and latest price are empty. And the chat response is the content of the first chat GPT response. Depending on the decision of chat GPT to use function calling or not, one of the two info results will be returned. Back in the streamlit part, we get the result back and with the JSON loads, we can get access to each part. So we assign the chat response to result underscore response and we do not need this placeholder anymore. In this example, 
we do not use result price, but feel free to extend this chatbot and uh, use it to place an order or indicator. But we use result underscore ticker to display additional data. If it's not an empty string, we get the historical data from Yahoo Finance and display it using Streamlit data frame. We adjust the data frame just as we did in our Jupyter Notebook, but this time we use Streamlit chart instead of Jupyter chart to display the candlestick chart in Streamlit. To test the app, we type Streamlit run app.py. This will start Streamlit on local host 8501. In the user interface, we ask, what is the latest price of Microsoft? ChatGPT uses our function to get the latest price of Microsoft, which is $343, and we get additional information like the history and chart for Microsoft. Then we ask a question like, what is algo trading? For this question, ChatGPT does not need to call our function. This time the answer comes back from the else part of the if function calling condition and as the ticker symbol is empty, we do not get any additional information like the history or the chart. To test again, we ask for the latest price of Apple and we get $191 along with the historical data of Apple and the chart for AAPL symbol. To understand better, we can check our the logs. When we scroll up, we see the first call to ChatGPT. It has no answer in the content part, but ChatGPT decided to do a function call to our function getStockInfo with the argument MSTF. The function returned the price in a float number. This answer, along with the chat history, is sent back to ChatGPT and a user-friendly message came back as the second response. We see the comment line response with function call and see ticker and latest price and chat response. For the next prompt about algo trading, ChatGPT did not use our function and the answer is in the content part. The comment line responds with no function call, shows our info result with empty ticker and empty price and the content of the first response as the chat response. For the next prompt, asking for the latest price of Apple, we see again a function call and a friendly response in the second response of the chat GPT and the ticker AAPL. Please keep in mind that we did not use any tokens for the historical data and the chart as we did not include them in the chat history. So to use ChatGPT to feed a trading bot, you need a clear understanding of OpenAI's function calling and when and how to use it. This example can be a starting point. Good luck.